I just wish he'd bunch it up a little bit. Sometimes when he's doing hey, I do I do with what I'm given with what <laughs> I'm giving. <laughs> Hi Lex. Hi, honey. I'm so ready to go back to work, aren't you? Mm-hmm. So you guys are on I'm good at it. You're on a little we're, we're on hiatus this week. Okay. And so you know, we get we're we have such a crazy schedule. It's not really crazy because normally we do three in a row and then we have a break. So how many people could say they get a week off a month? <laughs> not a lot of people. Um, I, uh, you know, okay, so Leslie, we spoke during the pandemic. It was one of the greatest joys of my life. So Cheyenne, I'm jealous that you get to work with this man every, every day, except on your off weeks, of course. Um, but uh, also Cheyenne, we've spoken, spoken before and um, it's great to have you both in this virtual room with me together. So thank you for joining me. You're welcome. Thanks for having us. Yeah, I, uh, um, I know, I, you know, let's just start here. I mean, I just want to go right to banana bread uh, based on one of the episodes from Call Me Cat and, and just ask you, is banana bread really considered an aphrodisiac? Is that why I'm single? Because I've never offered a man banana bread? <laughs> Leslie. I don't remember that. Cheyenne, fill me in. I don't remember that either. I don't, banana bread. You it offer this. You offer this hunky man who walks into the bake shop a little bit of banana bread. It's very oh, flirty. Yes, oh, yes, yeah. yes. That, um, oh, he was, uh, we thought for sure they'd bring him back as a boyfriend or something. Uh, what was his name? He was fun, though. Yeah, he walks in and I give him, I flirt with him and offer him the banana bread. Yeah. And then I had a line like, uh, heat something whatever I no mean, i mean it doesn't matter his name does not matter all i want <laughs> is the, all i want is the banana bread recipe <laughs> if, it, if it worked for you, if it worked for you. <laughs> um well like i said you two have given um given me a lot of joy during the pandemic and you've given a lot of people a lot of joy because of Call Me Cat as well. Um, you know, I think like over the last couple of years, everybody's craving some escapism, some comedy. Uh, but, you know, for the people who are actually in it, you both, um, I wonder since you've been filming this during the duration of like one of the most challenging times that we'll ever experience in our life, what kind of joy and what kind of levity has that brought to your lives? And Cheyenne, do you wanna start? Sure. Uh, well, it's brought a significant amount of joy. Uh, and stability and escapism. I think that's really what we are all craving right now is uh, because the world feels off of its hinges uh, to be able to go to work every day with five other people whom you adore and love and are inspired by, but also just to get to, to do something that is just unabashedly joyful and happy. I mean, what other show at the end of it has a curtain call, an old timey curtain call with, even if somebody has one line, they come out and we, it's really just been um, such a gift. I know people overuse that phrase, but it, it truly has like being able to be with, be home with my kids, uh, go to work and then be home every day in time for dinner. I've only missed maybe two bedtimes in this whole, in this whole run. So it, it, yeah, and when I'm off, when we have a week off of, uh, you know, for like Leslie said, for uh, hiatus, I definitely start to miss everybody and can't wait to get back and um, starting to hit our stride too, which feels good. What about you, Leslie? What has the show meant to you, especially as a source of connection during a time, I think, when it's been so hard to connect with people? I feel like you've really connected with this cast. Well, we had an amazing uh, beginning because we we were going to shoot the pilot and then the uh, pandemic hit and so we didn't get to but we did zoom we got to meet each other over zoom I don't think any of us really knew each other Cheyenne did anybody uh, we didn't nobody knew, you know I, I mean that I could recall I had worked with Cheyenne a couple of times but none of us were like friendly friendly and all of a sudden during the pandemic with the zoom and then getting things ready and they also promised us they said the minute this is over we're you're you're we're going back so what a wonderful way to go through that whenever there was so much uncertainty where people didn't even know if they were going to get jobs back or la 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 we knew what was ahead we knew what was coming and we just kind of bonded and so by the time we got all of us together we were just giddy 
I mean, we were just silly. We just loved each other so much. And um, it's been it's been hard because this show should be in front of an audience. It's multi-cam and it should be shot in front of an audience. And we're aiming towards that eventually, but we haven't been able to have an audience. So we are doing comedy with very little laughter. We've uh, we've we've had a director lately that screams at everybody and says, laugh like those old cameramen. They've heard it 20 times. You're not going to get a giggle out of any of them. They're like, you know, and so we we um, we just have to know that what we're saying is funny and that's that, you know. So it's it's been trying, but we have so much ahead of us. And I think this is a show that has some legs. You know, I read this article that um, what the what Fox was looking for with their pilot season, different kinds of shows. This was in Deadline, and it said what we're looking for is some some show some shows that we can pair with Call Me Cat. So it seems to me like they're going to build nights around us, and we you know. I just wanted to go for a while, you know. I'm at an age. I'm 66. I was thinking if it went as long as Big Bang Theory, I'd be like almost 80 <laughs> when it's over. I'd be ready to retire. I'd be so rich. <laughs> You'd be set for the next many years, Leslie. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, I have an appreciation for some of the um, well that it's queer inclusive. First of all. Um, that it features both of you and and it's a real kick getting to see Cheyenne play I don't know like the straightest man I've ever seen on TV. <laughs> <laughs> pull it off. Pull it off. Pulls it off. One hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. And he'll walk over to me. He'll be all much walk and go. Listen, girl. <laughs> he'll be listen, girl. <laughs> After he's just been the bushes. Yeah, he immediately has to break character. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, uh, what is it like for you both um, as members of the LGBTQ community, uh, both in the casting of this show, but also um, being a part of a show that touches on some really important LGBTQ specific topics like aging? Hmm. Go ahead, hon. Well, you know, I, I feel so protected. I don't know what it is. I, I just feel like I'm in this cocoon because we know that whatever they write, we've gotten, you know, writers come, they go this one in and out. But right now we've got some writers that came from Will and Grace and wrote my Emmy episode that I won. So they, you know, are always just everything they write, I adore, you know, to, and to know that, and it's, you know, I've been on, listen, I've, I've done some stinkers over the years. I've done where you go to the table read and you finish and you're like, oh my God, <laughs> you want to do like Roseanne did or somebody wiped their butt with it. Threw it out or but, um, I, you know, I've had, and every week the scripts just get better and better and better. And we're like, wow. And, and like I said, they, they're touching on all kinds of, of, of topics. They were whispering the other day, they want to give me an on-screen kiss. I said, oh, Lord. Uh, I said, we're going to give you a kiss. Yes. I said, oh, my God. Oh, That'll I'm be a first. Best. What actor uh, do you want to play that role, Leslie, is the question. Hmm. Um, well, we approached um, Rob uh, Gr Grakowski, the whatever his name is. That I was his name, the Gronk. <laughs> hey, I'm making that up. They did not approach you. I think he would be good, though. They should ask him. You'd approach him, is what you're saying. Yeah, there you go. I've got such a crush on him. <laughs> Understandable. I don't even watch football, but I'm glued to that. I'm glued to the to the TV. Yeah, he's one reason to watch football for sure. He's just adorable. Yeah. I um I love as I was saying I, I have an appreciation for the last episode I watched which was when um you had that aging conversation in the car um and you used the pot lid analogy and uh you know yeah. how there's a different lid for every pot but as Phil says us old pots only get drug out when the roof leaks um, <laughs> great line it's, it's so like good that. it's so good Leslie how did that fit about the unique experience of aging in the LGBT Q community make it onto the show. Was that your doing? Mm -mm. 
you know, people think that actors as actors that we have a lot of say, and maybe they do, uh, other actors. I don't, I, I, I'm the kind of actor that I think writers love because I show up and just say their words, you know? And it, um, I learned a long, long time ago that stage is an actor's medium. T uh, film is a director's medium. TV is really a writer's medium. That's where you mm. have wonderful, wonderful writers. And I know the process that they sit around that table. Uh, Willie Grace at one point had 25 writers. Can you imagine 25 people sitting around the table going over line by line by line. And then you show up and the actors take off and, and speak the words. I just, you know, I'm very reverent. You do your job. I'll show up and, and, and bring it to life. You know, just give me the words. So um, no, I had nothing to do with, with that at all they they came up with it but i just loved it but you did it so what i think the writer first of all i've never heard it put that way the medium that's really really cool i i love to think of it that way um and i'm so and i am of like mind with leslie that uh you know my job is to be a conduit i go in there and i take what they give me and i you know portray it but so much of what they're writing now uh, especially our new editions that leslie was talking about um, I do believe they're taking from our own lives and who we are in the world. And so when they give Leslie like a monologue, like he did in the car about the, the gay lid, like I'm in the back seat as Max, <laughs> but I feel like crying as Cheyenne because oh. it's just Leslie's so brilliant. Swoosie is so brilliant. The two of them together, I just love their dynamic and you know, sometimes a sometimes a, a paragraph or a, a a a scene or a, just a set of lines will just hit you in the guts, and that was definitely one where I thought it was a home run. And yeah, it's I have to definitely like remember. Okay, I'm Max. I'm Max right now. I can't be like <laughs> Leslie. That was so good. <laughs> right. You can you can you you can day out after the day. for sure. For sure. But and and they're doing the same thing with they're really, really writing for Swoosie's strengths this season. And she's such an incredible everybody knows she's a well, maybe they don't, but two time Tony Award winning actress. Like if you haven't read her book, please do. Um, so she she always is a great dramatic actress, but they're giving her such delicious comedy this year. And it's such a wonder to just sit and watch her play she, off Ryan too, the way that. in which mm -hmm. the way in which the two of them. They had a scene the other day about, you know, being the mother and being the daughter and this and that. And I just, I did cry. I, and I told Swissy afterwards, she goes, really? I said, honey, that is such, pro, that is such profound mother-daughter talk there mm -hmm. where, you know, yeah, I have a life. You know what I mean? I, I'm i not just your mom. And yeah. there's a really funny line where, where, um, uh, Mayim says, well, you know, I, I never knew about, um, all this things, these things you did that you went to Woodstock. There's just a really cute scripture went to Woodstock. <laughs> but anyway, and then Mayim and Mayim goes, but wh why didn't you bring it up? She, and Swoosie said, because honey, I'm the mother and we talk about you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a fair point. Uh, Leslie, um, or actually Cheyenne, but this is about yeah. Leslie. How do you get through a take without laughing when this man is uh, in a scene with you. I mean, particularly the bicycle episode. I'm oh my God, oh my God. Okay, so usually we have a lot of material to do. And so we kind of, I just make sure I'm from the theater and I love to prepare and I love to be super solid on my lines. So when I get down there, if there's gonna be, you know, a bike or Leslie doing his thing, I don't, I don't break. But that that particular episode was was I think Anthony Anthony Rich directed that and it was really fast and we had tons of rapid fire and Leslie with the pratfall I mean and Julian was right in there with us uh, it's hard especially when there's a group scene maybe four or five of us sometimes all six of us together whew, to get us all to corral us all and to keep us on track is uh it's tough but that's the fun part because like leslie said we don't have an audience so we are each other's audience right now yeah i um i i want to know going back when you first met each other was it on the american horror story set we were trying to figure this out the other day i think it must have been 
the Amer I mean, I've known. I think it was the day that we were shooting in a big theater and they had Trixie Mattel. Yes. Narr uh, they had Trixie Mattel at guesting. She was on American Horror Story very, very briefly. Yes. As it was when the actors, so that would have been my Roanoke oh, Nightmare. Oh, no. And yeah. the actors were playing. You had the actor and then you had the actor playing the actor and then it went all, I couldn't keep up with it. But that I think is where we met. Yeah, um, but I've known who Leslie was forever and was a huge fan of Will and Grace and I can quote all of his stuff and I constantly do to him. <laughs> um, but it's one of the joys of he this whole- He better than me. <laughs> I just wish he'd butch it up a little bit. Sometimes when he's doing- Hey, I do, I do with what I'm given with what <laughs> I'm given. <laughs> oh, that's good, Diane. I'm impressed. I mean, one I can... of the joys, <laughs> one of the joys, my biggest joys of this has been to get to know Leslie on a on a friend, <laughs> a true friend basis. Because, you know, the the queer experience in Hollywood is you have to have lived it to understand it. And I'm in my mid 40s now, um, and you know, I've been around a while. And but so I I love to have mentors, and I love to have queer mentors. And Leslie has stories and advice and just so much wisdom and sometimes if i'm stuck on a line i will go to him and say like how do i how do i make this funny rhythmically or and he'll say like hit that hit that and then just drop that and it's it's just so intrinsic in him whereas multicam is still new to me so it's one of my favorite things is, is uh, finally uh, being on a show with you leslie what is it like i'm sure cheyenne is not the only person to, to have told you that you're a queer mentor to, to them. What is it like to hear that from other people in the LGBTQ community? Well, it's, you know, it's something that you look back over and, and I think, you know, I mean, I don't get up in the morning and think, oh, the mentor has gotten up and I've got, <laughs> but I look back and I think, you know, I hit Hollywood. When I got to Hollywood in 1982, West Hollywood was where I dropped anchor. You know, queers were, everywhere you know and I thought wow and then we you know then the crises hit the AIDS epidemic which I've seen so many parallels between this pandemic and the last one I've been through it I've been through a pandemic and um you know I was I was I was on the forefront of Project Angel Food when it got started I was right there in the meetings when Project Nightlight got started. I was right, you know, I, I, I was around. I was, you know, and I did my share and I'm very proud of that. And I think, you know, sometimes I look back and I think, wow, well, you know, own it. You know, it's so hard for us to say when people say stuff. Oh, my boyfriend constantly says to me, when someone compliments you, Leslie, you compliment them back. And I said, no, 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 I'm too busy going over. But, you know, he said, own it and say, you know, by the way, you, and that's what you do. And I, I, I'm working on that, you know, I'm working so hard on that is to thank, you know. Um, but anyway, yeah, whatever. Where were we? What was the question? <laughs> you, were, you were just um, about to thank Cheyenne for what he said. <laughs> that's what was supposed to happen, according to your boyfriend. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> yeah yeah and then oh. sing his prices which uh, cheyenne is a he's trained you know he's an actor I, I marvel i go over there and he's got his script like marked with stuff and and uh you know like you know put down in this first and that first of this you know and and um i think maybe i should do that but we all have our process you know we all have a way in which we approach it and um but his is uh, is to be admired. That's for sure. He's an actor, like an actor, actor. Thank you. Let's see. <laughs> We're all learning from each other. Everybody does. Say. Right. I'm a, you know what I am. Someone said to me once. I met this girl, and I said, "When did you When did you decide to become an actress?" She said, "Oh, honey, I'm not an actress. I'm a depictress." And I said, "You're a depictress. <laughs> what does that mean?" She said, "I just don't get in. You know, I don't do that whole methody thing." I just depict, then I go home and I thought, well, okay, so maybe I'm a depictress. <laughs> yeah, yeah, among many other things, of course. <laughs> I, uh, I uh, given, okay, so I have to ask, and we only have a few minutes, but I have to ask about the fact that you guys are on, um, I mean, this cast is very musical, right? There are several people here who can sing 
<laughs> um, and, you know, I'm glad that the show has realized that and there's been some performance numbers on the show. And given that there's an actual stage right there on set, how much unprompted singing goes on behind the scenes? <laughs> Mayim and I often find ourselves behind the pianos just playing and Mayim is incredibly musical and plays a bunch of instruments. And I love that they write that into the show a lot, but I know I'd like to see Leslie have a musical moment and, and uh, Swoosie have one. Swoosie has a great singing voice. And she's very, uh, she's very demure about it. But Kyla is also a great singer. Julian loves to sing. He's not the best, but it doesn't matter. He makes He's up- He's wild. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's a very, it's pretty, it's pretty a pretty musical cast. Yeah, I, that would be fun. Eventually, if what Leslie says, this show has legs, which I believe it does. Fox really has um, shown that they believe in us and know that this is going to be a show that's going to take a minute to marinate and become what it's going to be because we haven't had we haven't had an audience and we it's we're relying on ourselves and just like kind of figuring this out. We have masks and shields and we see this much of each other until they call action and then we see each other's faces and we're like oh all right okay it's just the most bizarre thing but that's the way it is now so yeah yeah maybe one day we'll have a musical episode which yeah but i love i will hear cheyenne and maya just sit down at the piano and sing and stuff oh that's wonderful that i was on reba mcintyre's show many many years ago and she'd do that all of a sudden she'd start singing i thought my God, that's Reba over there mm -hmm. just singing. <laughs> My God, Reba. But but you know it's wonderful. Oh, music music is is so healing, and I hope we I hope that yeah it's going to become an integral part of our show. Yeah, yeah. I want a I want a Leslie Jordan number. On the <laughs> okay. Yeah. After his after his makeout scene. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Or while you're making out. Can you wrong. Wrong. Can I get the same time, Leslie? <laughs> <laughs> um, I, uh, lastly, I just want to acknowledge the fact that I'm not surprised, um, but I want to just say out loud that, um, uh, Leslie, you can really work some heels. Um, I, I know you've <laughs> joked before that you came out of your mom's womb and immediately <laughs> stepped into her heels. Is that why you are such a pro at dancing around? No, because I did, I did, I did drag when I was about 19. We would have drag parties. And I was in my hometown, you know, we, you couldn't get in the bars when about 17. 17 years old, you couldn't get in the bars. So we had these drag parties up at this doctor's house, this very wealthy doctor. And we would put together drag shows and I was Miss Baby Wipes. That was about <laughs> <laughs> the sweet and petite Miss Baby Wipes. And I could work that stage. I'd do Tina Turner numbers and stuff when they were all doing like, you know, Barbara Streisand and everything. I was working the stage so I could work. I, could play. I knew that you could, I knew that you'd be good in heels, but when we had that episode with heels the other day, you popped them on, he was like, bum, 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 bum. like, it was amazing. <laughs> I can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I feel like the writers really, really know you, Leslie. Uh-oh. They really, really know you. Mm -hmm.